posed a question based on a recent video of my orchid chores diary where I extended the deep south with a further annex to take advantage of a few details that orchid ninja Sharon's son from Rare Roots of Joy would like me to go into more details on even though she has a pretty good idea why I did what I did. I am going to explain why things are set up the way they are in the deep south but I'm mainly going to focus on the orchids that we just recently moved. One video started the annex off with my summer bloomers down below and we'll start with those. This second orchid chores diary video then focused on mainly the rapiculous lalias and the slipper orchids I have in that shelf down there. Okay let's go geek out and we're going to start right here with this shot because we're going to talk about the summer bloomers. You know that summer bloomers, species phalaenopsis, novelty hybrids, they are warm to hot growers. They like it nice and toasty and they like a lot more light than the complex hybrids do. So behind me, I have protective curtains protecting the other orchids behind that on their shelves. That is a lot of reflective indirect light which summer bloomers love. And the reason they are moved down low like that, even though I'm a little bit apprehensive about it, is because they like it warm as well. So apart from getting a lot of light from above, they are also getting residual heat from the terracotta below. Now I do not supplement with lights or any heaters in my winter grow space, so my summer bloomers suffer and struggle a lot. What I'm trying to do is, until circumstances change, give them a boost prior to them having to deal with the controversial conditions that they are going to be faced with, starting November all the way through to April. So this location for them gives them the best of both worlds for an extended period of time. The direction of growth is facing the right light source. They are not getting stressed out by how they should be positioning their leaves, which exerts more energy. So I'm making life nice and toasty and cozy for them until uh, shock horror you know, they're gonna just have to hopefully come through until spring. This is also perfect for when it rains. That is a beneficial factor. And also the position that they're in, there is kind of a little bit of a breezeway. I could call it the storming alley when we have high winds, but normally it's a breezeway. And this is perfect for when it rains, even if their crowns get wet, etc. they will dry out relatively quickly. Also, the sun being much lower in the sky, now we have an alley of bright, bright shade. During the summer months, that area is in full sun for about, well, I say summer months, but it's like seven weeks. And that is where I protect the orchids that are in the corner with a very fancy little umbrella. But that area now has the same benefits as the summer bloomers. They got a lot of heat and a lot of bright, bright shade, which is what they like. And I like because I do not risk forgetting my orchids and then, oops, burnt and singed leaves. So that is why the summer bloomers are on the lower shelf. My slipper orchids for exactly the same reason. They're a bit more covered because I don't trust the fact that rain in their crown is not going to affect them negatively. So that is why they are under cover, even though <laughs> lots of airflow down there. But yeah, I've made some mistakes just from mere flushing my slipper orchids, even during the summer, and I've had them rot out. So very, very cautious. That's why they are there, just to benefit from the reflecting light from the facade. You may notice that I've got semi-hydro holes showing left, right and center. And yes, I would much prefer to have a clean facade of just white pots with no holes showing at random. But there is a method behind what I'm doing here. And Sharon Sun, you probably know already why I did what I did. But mm, considering the orchids that are out in this location, maybe there is something that I can tell you and anybody else watching this video as to why it's not that straightforward. So let's go in a little bit closer and let me explain. First of all, let me explain the height of the table allows for a little bit of direct afternoon sun to hit these rapiculous lalias for the next maybe five days only. But it's the really late afternoon sun. The fact that the summer bloomers are so low on the ground, there is absolutely no sun down there just because they are lower. So here we have orchids that have been already subjected to direct sun while they were still in the blooming alley. But the main part when it comes to rapiculous lalias is to respect 
the back of the leaves and that has to face the main source of light. This is not about light training. My Rapiculus Lelius can grow as they want, where they want. This is about protecting the front of the leaf from burn because the natural instinct of a Rapiculus Lelia is to grow away from the light, protecting the front of the leaf from burning because in their natural surroundings, they are super exposed. The atmosphere is very clear where they live and burning a leaf will of course cause the leaf to reduce its capacity of photosynthesizing. So Rapiculus Lelias naturally face away from the main light source. And that is what I've been respecting here. And that is why you see a pot with semi hydrofoils facing us and other pots that don't. And then of course, there's this little exception candidate over here, my Flava Solina. I need that in my direct line of vision because that suffered some scale throughout the summer. And I wanna make sure that it stays clean the closer it is to me, the less it's going to be forgotten, so to speak. It is clean now, but we can see it has suffered some damage. But if I bring you in a little bit closer, and based on what I know where they were in the blooming alley, I can show you that the new growths of this Lucasiana right here are all facing away from the direct source of light. Given the fact that in the late afternoon there is still sun coming into this little area which will soon be gone, these growths here have been positioned in such a way that the back of the leaf is facing what could be the direct sun. So I am respecting what they knew and how they grew where they were before. This is also a form of energy conservation for an orchid when we move our orchids around. We want to make sure that the position of any new growths that have grown and we have to shuffle our orchids, that we maintain that location exactly the same if we're not growing under artificial lights. Because if we grow under artificial lights permanently, the light influence is coming from the top. The growth will naturally grow bolt upright. However, if you do bring your orchids outdoors for the summer months, you need to make sure that as your new growths grow in the outdoor environment and you still have time to shuffle them around to enjoy the maximum kind of temperatures before you have to bring them in, make sure that your growths are always in the same direction as best as possible based on how they grew in their main growing area. I hope all this makes sense. The energy consumption of an orchid that needs to then switch the direction of its leaf to actually absorb the light from the front of the leaf is very, very high. And there's no reason to put our orchids through that if we can just turn the pot in such a way that the growth actually has the same main source of light based on how it grew before. As you can see with these two growths back here. The main source of light you would think is actually the facade and that will be one day the main source of light but for now for the next week two weeks the main source of light is coming from this side because of the direct sun that still encroaches on the corner of this table. So I've positioned these pots this way because these growths have grown away to protect the front of their leaves from burning. In about two weeks these pots will be turned another 90 degrees because then the main source of light will be the facade. So this whole shuffle thing is only just beginning. It's now going to be ramping up as we get into the colder months of the year. Eventually though, my Rapiculus Lelias will not be moved anymore because by that time for the next four or five months, the main source of light will come straight from behind the camera from the facade. In the meantime, everything needs to be respected. Rapiculus Lelius will not change the direction of their leaves. That is not their growth habit. Whereas Phalaenopsis, the leaf of a Phalaenopsis will start to grow towards that light source, opening and unfolding according to where the main light source is, changing the direction of the growth of the orchid. So here I have Brade, all right? And I've got new growth all around. The new growth here had the main light source coming from this side. So you would say, well, why is this new growth opening its leaf up to the main light source? This new growth here had the light source coming from a white facade pillar that had late afternoon sun shining on it. So this growth immediately took on the protective growing position 
and actually did grow the way it was supposed to. The same pattern principle follows along the lines here. Itambana, back of the leaf. Bloom and shiny eye, back of the leaf. <laughs> and then you get to Brade. <laughs> a fun little rapiculous Lelia that is still a study in progress. Now you may think, oh my goodness, it's broken. It's kaput. No, that is not kaput. That is how Brade grow their new growths. And when the pseudobulb forms, they correct themselves and then it will be bolt upright again, just like this one. It's so strange. It really looks like something fell on the pot and snapped the growth. That is not the case. The growth is fine. The only thing is, why is it a bifoliate now? <laughs> like I said, it's a study in progress. But you see how even with this one, this is my Kautskiana. Here we go. Back of the leaf, sort of side of the leaf, same difference, is actually facing towards the direction of the main source of light. Now we always say we should position our orchids back on the shelf in exactly the same way as when we took them off the shelf. None of this applies, I would say, if you're growing under artificial lights because your main source of light is from above. However, for us that grow partially indoors and partially outdoors, we need to be very, very mindful of how new growths are growing when we move them around. The energy consumption for an orchid to do what it then would normally and naturally do is start to shift the flattest and most exposed part of the leaf to then accommodate and reach and absorb the main source of light. The energy consumption is exponential and completely unnecessary if we're just a little bit mindful about what is going on as we shuffle our orchids around. I would much rather prefer seeing no semi-hydro holes on any of the pots. That's why I also have sleeves around some of these pots because everywhere my tag is, is a semi-hydro hole. If I didn't have this decorative sleeve around the pots, we would be seeing holes, no holes, no holes, holes from the other side, you get my point. It just is a messy look. But this is not about what I would prefer to see from a visual perspective. This is about considering how the growth of Rapiculus lalia are growing and how to protect the leaves and position them in such a way that the back of the leaf will always face the main source of light. You see my tags on the summer bloomers? Yeah, that is what I would like to see. That is what I would like to also see on my Rapiculus lalias. But if I did that, I would cause some issues. Contrary to any other orchid that would reshift its foliage, its leaves, to then expose the open part of the front leaf to the main source of light, if we do not keep the positioning the same all the time, Rapiculus lalias will not move their leaves to accommodate the main source of light. So it is a big risk to just ignore the fact that they do burn, even though we know that they are very, very exposed to the harshest elements out in nature. Rapiculus lalias, new growths and all of that, we have to respect that the back of the leaf as best as possible is facing the main light source. And if there are multiple growths, we have to make sure that the new growth, the front of the leaf does not get hit by direct sun. And definitely in my climate, in cultivation, I cannot have these exposed to the harsh summer sun of southern Spain. Unfortunately, there are my reasons as to why I've done what I've done. I hope that that answered all the questions and thoughts. Sharon Sun, let me know in the comments and anybody else that has watched this video. Let me know what you think. Does it make sense? Do you have any questions? And if you're still watching this video at this point in time, I want to thank you for your time. And I want to put out an apology. This is the fourth time I have filmed this video. If there was any static in this video that I could not eliminate, I have no idea what is going on. Yes, our weather is supposedly supposed to change. Maybe there is some electricity in the air. I have no idea. But every time I have filmed this video and then I downloaded it, I had static in the audio. The number four is my lucky number. <laughs> I hope that this time around the audio is clear. And if not, I profoundly apologize for that. Anyway, thank you so very, very much for watching. I appreciate you, your support on my channel. Have yourself a beautiful day. One condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.